Hey, good morning, everyone, and welcome to Fuel for Success. This is Mike. Uh, Matt's on his way into his uh, Palm Tree studio, and he'll be with us in just a few moments. Ran into some traffic delays, and, uh, you know, sometimes life just happens. But uh, it's good to see everybody here this morning, and uh, welcome to episode 33. Today is uh, Va Valentine's Day, so happy Valentine's Day to everybody out there. Thanks so much for joining us. Uh, it's great to see everybody here this morning. Um, I see my wife's even on. She's out uh, picking up food and things for <clears throat> Mission 25 that's coming up next week in Nashville. Uh, if my uh, voice gets a little <clears throat> cracked, you'll have to forgive me. I was up most of the night sick. But you know what? We've uh, committed to doing the show every day, Monday through Friday, and we're excited about it, and we don't want to let let our uh, our friends down. So so here we are. And uh, today's Friday, and every Friday we talk about family and relationships. Um, hey, before I get to that, I want everyone to know that last night we did a live broadcast about Mission 25. We made some pretty cool announcements, uh, talked about some big you know, vision things and some groundbreaking things that are happening with Mission 25. And I want to encourage you all to uh, to go watch that if you weren't there, if you haven't seen it yet. And uh, we sent out the link, <clears throat> and I can actually, I'll put it in the, in the show notes of this show as well. So that we'll link it up so you can find it pretty easily. And uh, and go ahead and, and jump on there and watch that. It was about an hour long. We, we covered a bunch of stuff, and we're excited next week is is of course our Nashville Mission 25. Um, a week from uh, tonight we'll be starting that and we're excited about that and uh, it'll be, uh, man, there, we got so many amazing things going on. I don't want to turn this into a Mission 25 show. I got to be careful because I'm so passionate about it. I might just do that. But uh, by all means, make sure you watch that that uh, show from last night. Watch the recording, the archive, and, uh, and see what those are all about. <clears throat> so, uh, Wanted to also remind everyone, you know, as I said, today's Friday, family and relationships, and, and uh, next week, Monday through Friday, as you know, on Fuel for Success, we do a different sort of topic every day. Monday, we'll be talking about health and weight loss. Tuesday, life coaching and motivation. Wednesday, we'll be talking about spirituality. Uh, Thursday, will be business development and entrepreneurship. And, of course, Friday, family and relationships. And what a, what a better day to have... Uh, how could you get a better day to have family and relationships in Valentine's Day on this Friday, the 14th of February? So we've got plenty to talk about. We're going to have Matt on in just a little while as soon as he gets his uh, um, into his studio and his office there. And I uh, want to ask everybody, uh, Kimberly, I, I feel your uh, your pain. I'm, uh, I've got like a stomach thing. So Kimberly says ear infection, sinus infection, a fever. Prayers for you, Kimberly, for sure. And... Uh, want to encourage everyone and remind you to, you know, we love the interactivity of this show, um, the ability to chat in the chat box and ask questions and submit questions. We've got a bunch of questions lined up uh, from from before, uh, you know, from folks text in and call in, um, they email. And so if you have even after, uh, you know, after the show's over and you think of a question, you can go ahead and text that in to the number. Uh, that we have, or you can email me at mike at mattmatics.com, and I'll get that uh, get that number for you real quick that you can text in, and, and you can actually, we send out text message uh, notifications as well as uh, about once a week we try to do like a motivational text message, and if you want to be uh, on that text list, you can text the word at start to 727-341-5599. And I see Matt just joined us, so we'll get him on there. And also, you can text questions to that number as well. So feel free to go ahead and text in uh, any questions that you might have to that number. And I'm going to bring you on here, Matt, if you're there. I'm my friend. Good morning. How you doing, man? I'm good. I was just covering a bunch of details and talked about the Mission 25 show we did last night, and we'll put the link to that in the show notes from this one. And it was just reminding folks to ask questions and, and interact. How are you doing? Dude, I am blessed. It's a beautiful day here. It feels like spring. It's so fresh. It's so clean. Just keeping busy, man, enjoying life. Awesome. 
Happy Valentine's Day to everybody out there. Thanks for taking time to watch our show today. It's been awesome. Been a great month so far. Looking forward to seeing everybody in Nashville. We had a great show last night, man, with uh, yes. some exciting things that are taking place with Mission 25. So how are you today, man? I like the 33 with the heart in it. That's a good touch there. Pretty creative. Uh, I'm good. As you can tell, I'm rolling pretty casual today um, because I am not feeling well at all. I'm getting better. I can fix that for you. Good. Got your back. <laughs> Cannot wait to have my Mac back, bro, by the way. I'm patiently <clears throat> waiting. That's, uh, you know, in today's world, it's so difficult to even operate in life without, like, your computer, right? It's just, I mean, the computer guy was so nice. He's like, I'll give you a loaner. You know, I'm like, I don't need a loaner. I need my computer back. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, got all my exactly. stuff on it. I, by the way, I have my No, I Will Not Fix Your Computer t-shirt on Dude, today. you need to it's wear so that. Funny. That is bad right there. That is so funny. <laughs> that means you're taking the day off. You're sick, aren't you? Pretty much. Well, what do we have in store today, hey. my friend? Well, we've got family and relationships here on this Friday. My favorite. And, uh, and, and we... Uh, you know, we've got tons of stuff that we can um, that we can talk about. I'm encouraging everyone to go ahead and ask questions. I've got questions that have come in. Um, uh, let me let me ask you this. Let me start with this. Um, you know, in in any relationship, there's always opportunity for conflict. Mm -hmm. There's um, there's uh, you know, a possibility for miscommunication. You know, we've talked about that before. Communication is just flat hard. And, and things happen. I mean, life happens. Conflict happens. Uh, and what's your best advice for someone that, that needs to, like, forgive and let go and sort of move on in a relationship that maybe they've been hurt by a misunderstanding or something of that nature? Talking about forgiving and letting go. What's your best advice for I someone? Mean, you know, I know we already talked about forgiveness, so I'm not going to go deep into this. Uh, at the end of the day, Mike, yeah. it's honestly a decision that has to be made to get over it. Like literally, there just comes a point where you have to stop talking about, you know, in other words, what can be done? Not even God, as big as he is, can fix the past. It's over. Either you're going to let go and heal or you're going to hold on to it the rest of your life and it's going to destroy you. It's going to it's going to zap your energy, It's going to sabotage your success going to hurt every other future relationship. That's why I tell people, look, the worst thing you can do is go from one relationship to another. I honestly believe people need time to heal because what happens if you don't heal from the issues of that previous relationship and you carry it into your future relationship, then you're liable to honestly repeat the patterns. So, you know, Mike, we have to make a decision to let go even if you were betrayed, even if you were cheated on, even if you were really hurt, you can't believe everybody's going to do that. You can't believe every man is a pervert. You can't believe every girl is a liar. You know, and if that's your outlook, that's what you're going to attract into your life. So what your number one focus should be is wholeness, is trying to become a better person and deciding. You just have to decide. You know what? Yes, I was hurt. Yes, they were wrong. But I'm going to forgive and let this go because I'm not going to let this destroy the rest of my life and spend the rest of my life with these feelings of anger and woe is me. You know, honestly, Mike, you got to break the victim mentality. Most people never advance because they continuously live in this victim mentality. If somebody has wronged you, the problem is not you. The problem is them. So you can't live the rest of your life feeling like a victim. So that's what I, that's what I would say about that. I know we left off last week. We wanted to talk about blended families, and I'm exploding yeah. with passion about that subject. So I would like to address that. I don't know if that's one of our questions today, but definitely want to take high priority yeah. on those that have asked questions in previous shows. But go ahead, man. Well, we've got and we've got a couple of new questions coming in as well. Um, 
you know, we, we actually we've got several questions that are, that are related to to blended families, um, and especially like how how can single moms encourage the development of manly characteristics in sons that have little contact with their fathers, and and Pacey's also asking about helping girls whose dads aren't part of their life, and and these are sort of related questions about you know kids that really don't have a father figure in their life. Um, hmm. You know, that's a tough thing. That's obviously something I'm extremely passionate about, trying to help kids that don't have fathers, because it does impact them. I'm sitting there looking across Caleb at Crack the Braille today, and he looked so secure. He looked so safe. He looked whole. He looked happy. He looked peaceful. And I thought, my God, if he didn't have me, how much different would his life be? You know, and so... Definitely, we absolutely, we as men need to be stepping up and helping. You know, I don't get why more uncles and cousins and, you know, grandfathers are not involved. You know, for example, let's say, um, let's say I had a sister, which I do, you know, that has a son and I lived close by. Well, I sh and he doesn't have a dad, you know. You should step up and build some traditions, whether it's taking him fishing, you know, every other Saturday or take going to his ball games. I think what we need to do is, okay, let me go back to the question, okay, because now I'm starting to address the men. You know, Mike, the best thing that a lady can do that has a child, a son, um, read the book, Bringing Up Boys by James Dobson, because if we're not careful, you can take away your boy's masculinity if he doesn't have a strong male in his life. And you as a mom need to pull back a little bit if a strong male such as his grandfather or uncle um, sometimes has to discipline him. Obviously, this is all within balance and clear understanding. But I see too many moms trying to overcompensate I think one of the biggest dangers of a single mom that they make with their kids, as much as my heart goes out to them and as much as I can't even stand the thought of a child being without their father, I see a lot of moms overcompensate, trying to play both roles. You will never be able to play both roles. You are the mom. Yes, you're the predominant disciplinarian. Yes, you have to step up and do things that a dad would normally do. But you got to be careful lest you take away the masculinity of your son. And another thing that I don't think moms should do is tell little boys that they've got to be the man of the house because, you know, or you've got to be strong. That's that's really not good for the psychology of a boy. You know, we think it is, you know, make them, you know, feel responsible. And, you know, you got to protect, you know, all of us and all that. I just think that, you know what, as best as possible, get them around other men. Churches are great for this. That's why I think everybody needs a good church because there are men that go to church. Um, family members, don't be afraid to call and say, look, man, I got a really huge request. As you know, you know, don't be afraid to call your brother or your, your dad and say, I just need help. Can, can we maybe, can we set up something monthly or weekly? Can he come and spend the night with you you know, once a week and you guys just, you know, do stuff, go take a walk, you know, go play ball, you know, things like that. I think those are little things that we can do, Mike, that will help, um, that will help boys in the area of, of, of becoming men, you know, getting them around other men. Good. <clears throat> um, We've got several questions that sort of center around the the topic of blended families and and especially you know blended families in the church um and i know you were saying you're sort of full of passion about that give us your thoughts on blended families and how how is how can um you know i'm, I'm wondering as a as as someone that's you know a minister in the church and and as somebody that has you know uh influence over groups and small groups and those sort of things how can i be effective in helping people that have blended families and, and what, what are, what's your advice for those situations? Well, a lot of it, Mike, is knowledge and education and instructing people the right way to do this type of stuff. I think that a lot of parents are selfish when it comes to their kids. I think that we need to accept the fact that from 
until the time they're 18 or old enough to be an adult and make their own decisions, that we have a very huge responsibility. I don't think enough single parents take that serious. Case in point, um, when I went through my divorce almost nine years ago, the number one focus that I had with the lawyer was putting it in writing that his mom could never even move out of the county without my written per permission. Uh, and I think that's good both ways, you know, that I would obviously never move with my son because I don't believe that children should be removed from their parents unless their parents are truly abusive. And this is tough because I see singles out there in the dating world, they're dating people from other states. And I'm thinking, there's no way possible that I would ever bless somebody moving your kids away from one of their parents. I just don't believe that's healthy for them. I think it's selfish. I think you're almost better off either having a long, uh, you know, long distance or a long waiting period uh, until your kids are 18, or you need to just accept the fact that, you know what, you know, life is not fair. Life is never gonna be perfect for anybody. We all have our challenges. We all have our difficulties. But I am against parents that live in other states from their kids. Say, well, you know, I fly in and see them over the summer. It's not the same. Like, literally, it's not the same. I literally try to see my son every day, even though I share parenting with him. Like, I promise you before Almighty God, Mike, I would live on the streets. I would work at McDonald's if I had to. I would work. At night at Walmart, if I had to, I would sleep in the back of my truck if I had to. Before, I would move away from my son. I see guys like, I got a job opportunity, man. It's too good. You know, I'll fly him here. I'll fly my boy here. Or I'll fly and see my daughter. No. I know you can call me an extremist. You can call me a radical if you want. But it's our kids. God himself has entrusted us to parent our children. Um, I personally would never date a girl who had kids whose dad was involved in their life because I would never, it's the golden rule, I would never ask a girl to take her kids away from their father and vice versa. I just don't believe that people should do that for any circumstances unless the parent is not involved in their life or that parent is unsafe. I think it's a selfish move. That's my opinion. You might disagree with me. I think it's selfish to move your kids away from their parent. So I think that's number one when it comes to blending families. I mean, again, we're going to go back out of this next Friday because I have other things that I believe are important in the whole process of doing this. I think at the end of the day, it literally is almost impossible to blend families, but it can be done. It can be done if God is number one. That's first and foremost. God has to always be number one because life never works without God being first. I believe that blended families need to have a time of prayer together every single night because prayer bonds you. And of course, you know, you're going to have those situations where it's my son, your son. I think that, that both couples coming together should eliminate this type of talk that it's not ever going to be about, well, you know, you know, again, selfishness has to die if this is going to succeed. You have to have royal, deep, unconditional, serving love that you don't get into this, well, you know, you, you, you discipline. All, there just has to be so much communication. You know what Jane Dobson says? He tells dating couples they need a minimum of a thousand hours of communication before they should even get engaged. We don't talk enough, Mike. We don't talk about scenarios. I believe that, that a man and a woman that has kids that's thinking about getting married, I believe that they should talk about scenarios, like a scenario that could happen, right? Like, for example, like if someone was coming into my life, right, uh, that had kids, and, you know, I have a Friday tradition with my son. It's something we've done for years, just he and I, father, son, right? So wouldn't that be tough on another kid that I was taking in? If I was marrying this lady and her kids and all of a sudden I got this. So what I would have to, what I would want to commit to is creating the same type of tradition on another day 
with my future wife or my wife's kids. You know what I'm saying? Not this like, oh, that's not fair type talk. I think that there needs to be a, a communication of everything and it needs to be, doesn't need, you can't be offended, you can't be defensive, you know, you can't attack. You just have to communicate, man, Mike. I could, again, it's hard to cover it in 30 minutes, so I really want to just hit about 10 to 15 minutes on this every single time. But I'll just throw one more thought about this. I think that in my situation, I try to live by the golden rule because I do believe in karma. I do believe in the law of sowing and reaping. So I'm very committed as a, as a single dad to make sure that if I were to marry a girl, you're, we're talking about blending families here. I can only go by my own example. Right. Is literally treat my wife's children the same exact way that I know that I would want a stepdad to teach my, to, to, to treat my son. So I literally would live that out. I would know in my mind every single time I would think, okay, how would I want someone to talk to Caleb? How would I want someone to treat Caleb? What if Caleb didn't have a dad and his mom? I mean, I could go into this, man. I've, seen, I've, I've experienced it. I've seen it. I've seen it good and bad. I've seen it work and I've seen it be disastrous. I mean, really disastrous, but it can be beautiful. In fact, it can be amazing. If God's number one, if the married couple has unbelievable communication and understanding going into it, you know what I mean? There has to be a clear understanding going into it. Do you want me to discipline your kids? Okay. If that girl says no, then either I got to respect that, right? But at the same time, you know, you got to see eye to eye on discipline. You got to see eye to eye on what are you going to do if your kid is unruly or, or doesn't behave like what's your your form of discipline right because i see a lot of parents in my opinion and i'm not perfect i'm learning every day i make all kinds of mistakes as a dad but i do see a lot of parents make mistakes in my opinion when it comes to disciplining other there's other spouses kids and you know what i would say to every step parent your number one goal should be to connect with that child and build a connection with them in a relationship. Rules without rebellion, rules without love lead to rebellion. Rules without connection lead to rebellion. A lot of times step parents come in as this disciplinarian, you know, and this is the way it's gonna be. This is our home. I'm, that's just so stupid. That's stupid. That does make me mad when I see men do that or I see ladies do that, you know. And and look, man, a wise step parent would never put down that child's father or mother ever, even if they were the biggest right. crook that existed. A wise step parent would never do that. You know, Mike, my biological mother literally dropped me off on my dad's porch when I was two years old. I never once in my lifetime lived with my biological mother. Many times went six months without even seeing her. And you know my stepmom, who's the most unbelievable lady that breathes. And I don't. I only refer to her stepmom as step uh, as terminology, so we all understand. I don't believe in saying stepmom. I don't. And I don't believe in forcing kids to call your spouse mom or dad. I think that you don't ever need to let that come naturally if that's going to come. But do um, you know that to this day, my stepmom will text me on my biological mom's birthday and say, don't forget it's your mom's birthday. To this day, 38 years old, to this day, that's unbelievable to me. To this day, if I, if I call my stepmom and tell her how, maybe how hurt I feel about something I, you know, I don't have a relationship with my biological mother. Like she'll always spin the positive, no matter what. Even if I'm bleeding in pain, she'll spin the positive. So I could literally write a book on how to do it right just from what I learned from the mom that my father married when I was four years old. But I also had a very evil stepfather in the man that married my mom. So I can tell you both sides, what to do mm. and what not to do. 
And if my transparency bothers you, I'm sorry, but that's just all I know how to be. That's good. You know, your, <clears throat> your stepmom, and again, referring to her that just so we, so we know who it is, uh, there's a principle there of, of authority. And when you tear down authority in somebody's life, um, you're really undermining your own authority. So, um, you know, parents or step parents who, who, who talk bad about the other parent or, or undermine their authority or really they're taking away their own foundation of authority. There's a, there's a principle in the word of God that says that. So, um, that's some good stuff right there. We had, we had sort of, uh, touched on a little bit today, but also last week we had talked about the sort of the topic of, of boundaries, uh, when it comes to kids. And I think it was related to boundaries when we were, when, uh, when you're dating, right? If you have kids and you're dating, um, and, uh, we had made a note to come back to that. So, uh, I don't know if you wanted to approach that topic right now. We've got about four minutes left. Mike, if you're going to date someone that has kids, then you need to be extremely interested in those kids and never annoyed and never bothered that they're around, you know, except this is where it comes back to responsibility. Look, if you can't man up or a woman up, if you don't want to date someone with kids, you ready for this? Look in the screen. Don't. Hear me? There it is. I just set you free. Hear me? There's 7 billion people on this planet. If you don't want to date someone with kids, don't. But if you do, then... Be mature and responsible and tough and to, to let that parent feel safe. Like me, I could talk about Caleb for an hour. And there's a good chance if I was on a date, I would. And if someone seems bored, I'm out. You know what I'm saying? Because that's just my life. I'm a dad. I'm, I'm a dad. I'm not a part-time dad. I'm a full-time dad. I'm a dad. You know, so I think that we need to use wisdom. And I think any anybody that's a parent, oh, my God, when Jesus said the word watch and pray, you better do some massive, serious watching before you think about dating somebody. If you had kids, if you had to be careful when you were single and carefree, you have to be a million times more careful now that you have children. So I would watch. I would ask questions. I would ask strategic questions. I, you know, and I would get my kid around this person. Listen, kids are not, kids are smart, my friends, and right. they will let you know. And I'm going to tell you about kids. You can't fool kids. You cannot fool kids. If kids, they will let you know if they feel safe about the person you're dating. Hear me? And if they, if your kids do not feel safe about the person you're dating, done. Done. Over. No matter what. If they don't feel safe, if your kids say, I don't know, mom, he's just not real nice to me when you're not here. Don't be like, oh, honey, give him a try. That's dumb. That's not being a responsible mother. I know I'm coming across a little strong, Mike, but we've got millions that are destroying our kids because we're not being wiser in our dating right. choices as single parents. You know, there's a, there's an overriding theme to everything that you've said, and that is, um, you know, selfishness is the thing that gets in the way. And when we put the really, I mean, our responsibility as parents in the eyes of God is to put, I mean, we're the servants of our children. Yeah. I don't know how else to put it. And we, we have to put their needs first. And when we take, our own needs and, and, and elevate them above the needs of our kids. That's what, that's when we run into trouble. Yeah. I mean, you know, Mike, it, it's all going to depend on the situation. It's all going to depend on, you know, there's, this is so broad. That's why I think next week, Mike, let's let people ask real life questions, maybe, um, on what something you're dealing with. Um, so, you know, 
these little principles will help you at least get started and at least save you from making some bad decisions. Uh, Maria looks like asked the question, and I'll close with this. What kinds of questions would you ask? I'm a storyteller, so I would paint pictures and, and give scenarios, Maria, and and ask straight up honesty, what, what would you do in this situation? You know, what are you going to do if you're on a date, right? You plan this date, and you're on a date with this lady who has a kid, and the kid calls, and he's at the babysitter, and he says, Mom, I just miss you really bad. I don't want to be here. You know, I'm not feeling good. I just threw up or whatever. Are you going to be angry if your little romantic date gets canceled because you got to go pick up her son? If you are, then you need to go hit up some dating websites and find you a girl that doesn't have kids, my friend. So I would paint pictures and, and give scenarios like, what if this happened? You know, what if it wasn't my night to keep my son? And, you know, I mean, dude, I could go on like hours about dealing with exes. Holy Jesus. Hey, you know, our situations that we encounter, they reveal our character. And the wisdom in what you just shared was the fact that, um, you know, you can't live through every situation to sh see the character of the people that you're dating. So the best way to do that is to paint those scenarios, try to live them before they actually happen so you can reveal the character to understand whether or not there's a, there's a compatibility there. Yeah, absolutely. So this is, you know, I know this is a little strong. I know we got a lot of single parents that watch our show. I pray for you. I really do. Um, it's not easy. It is not easy being a single parent at all. It's definitely not easy if you got a deadbeat dad or a deadbeat mom. Hey, y'all better be showing some compassion. We talk about single moms. We got to start ministering to some single dads, my friend. <laughs> you know what I'm saying, Mike? Yes. Live it up this weekend, my friends. Live it up. Don't be bored. Don't be depressed. Don't be sad. If you don't have a Valentine's Day today, don't think about it. <laughs> Keep your head up. It's coming. Write a letter to your future spouse. There you go. Let them read it when you meet them. But not on your first date because then you'll freak them out. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> awesome. Well, let's... Uh... We're going to have to run. Everybody have a great weekend. We'll look forward to Monday's show. Any final thoughts, Matt? Yeah. Are we having a staff meeting today? Yes. Then I'll see you in Let's do two it. minutes. Sounds good. Notice I had water today, not my tea. I didn't have time to good. make it. Happy Valentine's Day, everybody. Oh, we love you. We believe in you. Thank you. See you next Friday, or Monday, actually. Duh. See you Monday at, what, 11? We do have a guest coming this 11 o'clock. Looking forward to it. We love you, buddy. Have a great weekend, everyone. God bless y'all.